Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can access your Synology NAS remotely using DDNS. So Synology gives you a free DDNS hostname and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now we'll first take a look at exactly what the DDNS hostname does um, and then we'll take a look at how you can set it up and a little later we'll look at how you can access your NAS using that DDNS hostname. So before we get started I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So DDNS stands for Dynamic DNS. And what this does is it tracks your external IP address by a domain name. So Synology will give you a free domain name. And what you're doing is you are setting it up in a way that anytime your external IP address changes, it will go through and it will update that domain. So when your IP address changes, it's because you have a dynamic IP address. And when your IP address stays the same, you have a static IP address. So if you're lucky enough or you paid for it uh, to have a static IP address, then a lot of what we're doing at this point might not be necessary. The reason for that is because when you try and connect remotely, which we'll get to a little later in the video, you might be able to use that static IP address. The one uh, caveat to that is that if you need to get a Let's Encrypt uh, certificate, you will need a domain name. So we're quickly gonna look at the DDNS hostname setup now and then we're gonna move on to the accessing remotely. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have a Synology account. So open up the control panel and then go to Synology account. This is in DSM-7. And then you're gonna to have to sign in or create a new Synology account. Now it's very important to highlight here that you don't necessarily have to use Synology as your DDNS provider. You can use DuckDNS. I have a video, I'll leave a pop-up for that now. Um, you can use various other providers. All it's doing is it's just tracking your external IP address. So if you want to use Synology, this is, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it if you have a uh, Synology NAS. But if you don't want to set up a Synology account for whatever reason, you can go through and set it up with a different provider. So once you've created or logged into your Synology account, go to External Access, select DDNS, and then select Add. At this point, you can select the service provider as Synology, and then you're gonna to have to give yourself a unique host name. So this is gonna be whatever you'll use to access your external IP address. After that, you can select the Synology.me dropdown menu, and this is gonna be whatever domain you wanna use. So Synology has Synology.me, DiskStation.me, MyDS.me, et cetera. There's tons of them here. So you'll select whichever one that you want to use, then you can enter in your email address. Now under that external address, the IPv4 one, you will see your external IP address there. If your ISP is using IPv6, you'll see it there as well. However, if you have an IPv4 address, that's fine. Um, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna test the connection. It should return back as normal. Assuming that it does, you can move on to these next two checkboxes. So the first is get a certificate from Let's Encrypt. So what this does is it will go out and it will get a certificate for your DDNS hostname. Now, if you intend on getting a certificate for this hostname at a later time, I'd actually suggest you do it right now. The reason for that is because when you go to do a, um, a certificate renewal, the renewal will be done through DNS. So you will not have to open ports 80 or 443 in order to have that done. If you just go through and you uh, set up a regular Let's Encrypt certificate, you will have to open those ports in order for Let's Encrypt to validate it. So this is actually my preferred approach because at this point, if you're just using it for internal access or you're just using it for a VPN or something like that, but you wanna use that certificate for something else, you won't have to go through and open those ports to renew the certificate. It will automatically be done through DNS. So the last setting there is enable heartbeat. And if you leave this as selected, what it's gonna do is it will test that connection to ensure that it is up. And for whatever reason, if it's down, you will get an email informing you that it's down. So when I've had power outages in my area or my uh, ISP, I've lost internet connection, I've received emails informing me that the connection has been lost. So it's actually very helpful if you are outside of your house, because if you receive that email, there's a good chance that there's an internet issue or a power issue or something could be wrong with your NAS as well. Um, but you'll at least be informed that the connection has been lost. So if you selected the Let's Encrypt certificate, um, you're gonna get a pop-up at this point after you select OK that is informing you that the default certificate is gonna change. 
So if you're using other services, you'll have to go through and uh, basically relink those certificates to be the new certificate. So we'll take a look at that now. But I want to be clear that there's a good chance if you're not exposing any services on your NAS and accessing them by hostname that you might not actually have to change any of these settings. So assuming that you do, you can head over to the security section in the control panel and then you can select certificate and then settings. And at this point you will have to relink everything to that new default certificate. So other than that, at this point, DDNS is set up properly. So if you go back to that DDNS section, you should see that the status is reporting as normal. And what that means is that from this point forward, if your external IP address changes, it will update that domain name, that Synology.me or whatever domain you picked, it will update that domain name with your latest external IP address. So now that we have that set up, there are two main ways that you can access your Synology NAS remotely. So the first is a VPN server, and that is my preference. So there are a few different ways that you can set this up. The first is that you can set it up on a Raspberry Pi if you want to use WireGuard um, or OpenVPN. It's very easy to set up on a Raspberry Pi. I have tutorials on my site for that. But you can use a Synology NAS as well, and you can set up OpenVPN on your Synology NAS. So I have a tutorial for that. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But this is my preferred approach because you'll first need a configuration file and you'll have to edit that configuration file with your DDNS host name or if you're lucky enough to have a static IP address, your static IP address. And what you'll need to authenticate is you'll need that um, configuration file, you'll need a username and a password, and you'll need all three of those in order to access the VPN server. So at that point, whenever you're outside of your local network, you basically turn the, uh, the OpenVPN server on. What it will do is it will connect back to your local network. And at that point, you can access all of your resources as if you are on your local network. Um, you could take it one step further and set up a split tunnel VPN, which will ensure that only local traffic is routed through um, that VPN. So if you're going to something like Google, for example, it will automatically use your cell phone's network for that or whatever network you're on. But if you need to access your NAS, it will automatically go through and access your NAS using the local IP address. So that's my preferred approach. With that said, there are many circumstances why someone might want to go through either by the DSM port or by a reverse proxy server. Both of those are perfectly acceptable options. At the end of the day, my overall suggestion is to understand each process. And I tried to break that up as best as I can in my video on how to secure a Synology NAS. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But I also have an article for that, so I'll leave that in the description box too. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because there are reasons why you might want to access your NAS directly outside of something like a VPN. It's hard for me to tell you that everybody should be using a VPN because that's not necessarily true. But it is important that you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because if you don't, you might be exposing your NAS in a way that either isn't the safest or isn't the best or isn't even how you wanted to do it in the first place. So watch that video, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. If the video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.